As we hear God's word in scripture and join with Christ in his sacrifice of himself to the will of the Father, we invite you to worship with us in the celebration of the Mass. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We start the beginning of the week with God's blessing, the power of the Holy Spirit. May we ask him to give us the guidance and also uh, the courage to live out and to witness Christ. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that we may experience at all times the fruit produced by the Paschal observances through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We set sail from Troas, making a straight run for Samothrace, and on the next day, Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, a leading city in that district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We spent some time in that city. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate along the river where we thought there would be a place of prayer. We sat and spoke with a woman who had gathered there, one of them a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, a worshiper of God, listened, and the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul was saying. After she and her household had been baptized, she offered us an invitation. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed on us. The word of the Lord. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song, a praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this, that you may not fall away. They will expel you from the synagogues, in fact, the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think he is offering worship to God. They will also do this because they have not known either the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Are you a witness for Christ? In the modern understanding of that word, a witness is someone who attests to fact. We often associate a witness with a court proceeding where a wit at the witness stand, a person attests to the facts. Yet a Christian witness does not give testimony to facts but gives testimony to the truth. Truth of love. Truth that is not always visible or provable by modern standards. We render testimony to what we have seen in our hearts and not necessarily what we have seen with our physical eyes. Christian witness is a person whose life has been changed, seasoned, enlightened by encountering Christ. The Apostle John wrote, that which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. And today, we who have experienced new life in Christ give an account of his love and forgiveness, both verbally and the way we live our lives. And it attracts people to us, not because we are in some way attractive, but because that inner light of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that we do not witness alone for he will send us the Holy Spirit to be our advocate and counselor so that our words and actions are permeated by the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Did you catch the scripture from the first reading? Whereas Paul was witnessing to the group of women, Holy Spirit opened the heart, particularly of the woman named Lydia. Can you imagine the excitement that she had as she heard these words that were not just words, but the truth of love? This wealthy woman named Lydia was so taken by Paul's testimony that she desired to change her life to follow Christ. Her life was so touched by the grace of the Holy Spirit that she desired to give what she received. So she provided hospitality, not only to Paul. Good witness, as someone said, is, is like a signpost. It has to point the right direction and be able to be understood. We are witnesses to Christ because we point to him. Our Lord makes clear to us how concretely 
we can give from what we have received. We can simply witness by a smile, as Mother Teresa would always say, or answering a difficult email or phone call, not with aggravation, but patience and kindness. What is it we hear from first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13? Love is patient. Love is kind. Those are the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. May we bless our encounter with someone today at, at our work, at our school, or at home with may God bless you. Just as we have been blessed by the Holy Spirit, let us share this blessing with others like Lydia. Let us now stand. Trusting that God has placed in each of us the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit, let us lift these prayers to our Father in heaven. For Pope Francis, our bishops, cardinals, our priests, our deacons, our lay ministers, may they always walk by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For the world that is confused, ridden by wars and tensions, may the spirit that only Jesus can give permeate and become a place of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, those who are asking for the healing balms of the Holy Spirit, may our Lord touch them through the word of God, but also through the kind hands of family and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they behold Jesus, who is love itself. May they be welcomed into the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we dedicate this day, for you have gifted us with your Holy Spirit. May we give away these gifts, this precious gifts that we have received through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church as you have given her cause for such great gladness. Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At 
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Persons who are unable to receive the Eucharist are urged to unite themselves spiritually with Christ's sacrifice. Ask the Lord to make himself present with his grace and blessing. The following prayer, composed by St. Alphonsus Liguri in the 18th century, is a good model for your own prayer. O oh my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth, glorify the Lord by your lives. Today's Mass has ended, but our mission continues. Strengthened by this Eucharistic celebration, we are sent forth to reflect Christ's self-giving love to all whom we encounter this day. If you would like to contact us or donate to our television ministry, please write us at Catholic Life Television, Post Office Box 2028, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70821, or email at television at diobr.org.